Hey, this is Susanna with Science with Susanna. For some of you, long time no see, and um, I'm starting a new series on the central nervous system, and I'll be releasing these on a regular basis, if you can believe that. So, first things first when we talk about today's stuff. What I really want to focus on in this video is the nervous system organization. And this understanding of how the nervous system is organized is really key for as we move on in anatomy and physiology, lots of the things that you'll be wondering about. So the central nervous system, it includes your brain and your spinal cord, and it's where the processing and decision making occurs for your whole body. It will send information out through nerves, and all of these nerves we call the peripheral nervous system. Really, people wonder, what does that mean, peripheral nervous system? It's just all of your nerves. You have 12 pairs of nerves that come off of your head, and you have 31 pairs of nerves that attach to your spinal cord. That's your peripheral nervous system. Now, the peripheral nervous system, these nerves, can be a different types, though. You can have some that are motor nerves. They're gonna make things happen. So some examples of those would be your somatic or body nerves. Those control all, your, all of your skeletal muscles. There's over 600 muscles in your body and skeletal muscles in your body that these kind of nerves can control. Then you also have motor nerves that are autonomic and really we just mean automatic when we say that. So they're gonna control things like smooth muscle, uh, you know, in your GI tract, cardiac muscle in your heart and glands. When I say that, I really mean there's like a layer of smooth muscle around the gland and then when the nerve hits it, it makes it squeeze out whatever its product is. Now the automatic or autonomic nerves, they can be different types too. Some of them are called parasympathetic nerves and these got grouped together because all of them are involved in things like rest, digest, resetting things, uh, reproductive, uh, you know, forming sperm and eggs, things like this that help you um, maintain your body, but they're not what you need in an emergency. Those are the sympathetic nerves. So these nerves, and I usually make them pink like this, they all got grouped together because all of them are doing things to your organs to help you survive a crisis. So fight or flight. Okay, now let's talk about sensory nerves. So the peripheral nervous system, some of the nerves are telling organs what to do. And then we have nerves that are informing the brain about what's going on, whether it's your big toe or your stomach. So the sensory nerves can be, for example, your sense of smell, that's your olfactory nerve, or your sense of vision, your sight, that's your optic nerve can also be hearing. So there's a nerve called the vestibulocochlear nerve that takes hearing information to your brain. And then touch. Now this is gonna be all over your body. You uh, of course have a sense of touch in your skin. All of your internal organs have nerves that go up uh, towards your brain to say, you know, if you're hungry or if you're having a cramp or um, even your kidneys, uh, you know, they have sens sensation that can go up toward the brain. Uh, that also is things like proprioception, you know, so if I have my eyes are closed, I still know where my foot is and I still know where my arm is. That's proprioception. So sensory nerves that are moving from the ligaments and the tendons and the muscle so that my brain knows where all my organs are, all, all my limbs are in space. And then sense of pain. This also would include different types of pressure, you know, gentle pressure, harder pressure, all different kinds of sensory nerves for that information. Now, all of these sensory nerves are going to take their information up toward the brain. So that's the peripheral nervous system. Got it? So you've got the brain processes, then you've got nerves. And the nerves either tell things what to do or they bring information up to the brain. Now, there is another category, usually not talked about too much at the beginning of a nervous system lecture, but I'm gonna bring it up now. And it's called your enteric nervous system. These are nerves that are all over your GI organs, all over your intestines. They are so powerful that they are actually able to independently regulate all of your GI system without any input from your brain. 
And in fact, some people call it like a second little brain in your GI tract. And it is constantly informing your brain through usually a nerve called the vagus nerve of what's going on in your GI tract. And then your emotions and things like that can send information out to to modulate it. And this is why you get diarrhea if you're anxious or you throw up before you give a big presentation or sadly in a chronic state like this, people can get all kinds of GI dysfunctions because of their anxiety is modulating that enteric nervous system. Okay, so we did it fast, right? And uh, this is the first in the central nervous system video, uh, central nervous system series videos. And I will see you again in the next one. And hey, if you wondered where I was, it, this is, um, I'm making this video from Oneonta, Alabama, and it is beautiful here. This is my favorite time of year until fall, I guess. I love it in fall too. So I've only been in Alabama for a couple of years, and I thought I'd let you see a little bit of the gorgeousness of today in this first video.